Hey y'all, today I want to talk about some things I've been playing with involving ideas of chaos and complex or sophisticated ideas emerging from having just a few simple rules. One of the things that I've been thinking of with interest is the three-body problem, which is an idea in physics and mathematics that I think serves as a really great example of chaos. So I want to talk about that and how I think it's musically interesting and has aesthetic potential. So first, the two-body problem in physics, just in simplest terms, it's about calculating the orbits of two masses, each of which are going to have a gravitational pull on each other. Again, I'm simplifying here, but the idea here is that the interdependence of these two bodies is going to be complex, since they're each pulling on each other. But with some calculation, this motion can be predicted. When we add a third body, though, making it a three-body problem, the paths of these bodies becomes chaotic. Still, the motion of these bodies is governed by the same rules, the gravitational pull on each other, but the patterns tend to cease to be periodic, which defines why these are chaotic paths. They're not random because it's not arbitrary in any way. It's governed by these rules. So some useful definitions of chaos by Lynn Howe's definition that chaos is a kind of order without periodicity, or Ian Stewart's definition that chaos is the ability of simple models without inbuilt random features to generate highly irregular behavior. And I think this is musically interesting and it has some aesthetic potential. All right, so we've talked about a three-body problem. What about a three-oscillator problem? So here in this first example, I have one oscillator. That portion is just for sonification. That's just so we can visualize it. All I have is a sine oscillator at 0.675 hertz. That number is completely arbitrary. I didn't choose it for any particular reason, but it is sub audio. So this is a low frequency oscillator. And we can see that on our oscilloscope here. And then if I turn this on, bing, we can hear that oscillator going up and down mapped to the keys of a piano. So now it's just sliding up and down those keys. Okay, so now let's move on and let's look at two oscillators. Again, at the bottom here, this is just my oscilloscope. But now I have two oscillators. This one, which is set at 0.675 hertz. This one that is set at 0.378 hertz. Once again, there's no particular reasoning behind those numbers. They're arbitrary. They're just slow. But the other thing is that I didn't want them to be factors or multiples of each other, so they wouldn't be in ratio. Okay, but now what's different here is this first oscillator, as well as going to the oscilloscope, gets sent to S mod, which is received here, and this one gets sent to R mod. And so what these are each doing is they're frequency modulating each other. So my first modulator sends and frequency modulates my second oscillator, which also sends and frequently modulates my first. So metaphorically, these two oscillators have a gravitational pull on each other now. Here's my sonification. So this is more sophisticated than the single oscillator, but we can still find patterns in this. Okay, let's add our third oscillator. Now, one, two, three oscillators. This oscillator one mods number two and three. This oscillator two mods one and three. And then oscillator three mods one and two. And now we get far more unpredictable patterns, including it doubling back on itself sometimes. Let's listen. So I've taken this chaotic behavior and I've mapped it in the most straightforward way possible, just to pitch. But of course, there's an enormous number of musical elements that we could map this to. Amplitude, timbre, spatial location, duration, and more sophisticated ways to use this chaotic behavior. 
an example of an instrument that engages with chaos like this in, in a very similar way with three separate interdependent sources is Dutch synth designer Rob Hordyke's Benjolin. This Benjolin I have here is a Eurorack version made by the company Afterlater Audio, but Hordyke made these designs open source. So if you look online, you can find a whole bunch of different versions, as well as PCBs and plans to make your own. Anyway, what we have here is an oscillator here. And you can hear that goes from sub audio to very high. Here's another oscillator. And I can make this oscillator's frequency dependent on this one. So now this oscillator here is sub audio. And it's controlling the frequency of this one. Now I can simultaneously have this oscillator control the other one. And I can put them both in the audio rate. Okay, one oscillator, two oscillators, and then for my third element, there's this rungler, which is sort of a stepped voltage idea. Now, if I just put this like this, the stepped voltages are clocked by the second oscillator. So if I put this in the audible range, I sort of get interesting timbres that are based on the same frequency here. But then I can have this rungler affect this oscillator, as well as the two oscillators affecting each other. And I can listen at any point here. The last section here on the Benjolin is a filter, and so from what you've heard, you can understand why it might be useful to filter out some of those. Maybe I'll talk about this another day, but today I just wanted to focus on the three-body problem here. Of course, back in pure data, we can make all of our oscillators audio rate too, and see what happens there. Regardless of how we decide to use it though, these are the aesthetics of emergent complex behavior. To my mind, this is the same as developing a piece of music from a single motif. To use the traditional example, in Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, this wonderfully complex piece emerges from the simple four-note motif. In the same way, simple rules that interact with each other can lead to complex, beautiful, and non-random behaviors. I'll come back and talk more about developing these ideas, but I'm gonna leave it there for today. Let me know what you come up with.